Hey there folks and welcome back. In our last lesson, we began our discussion on optimization by talking about critical points. Just like you knew back in Calc 1, local maxes and mins of multivariable functions must occur at critical points, though not every critical point is necessarily a local max or a local min. So once we've found our critical points, how can you tell? How can you classify these as local maxes, local mins, or neither? Well, it's helpful to think about what you did in Calc 1. Once you've found your critical points, you often use the second derivative test to classify the extrema. This test says that if we start at a critical point, x equals c, then we can often classify it as a local max or a local min based on the sign of the second derivative. In particular, if the second derivative at c is negative, your function has a local max at x equals c. The intuition is that if the second derivative is negative, your function is concave down, looks something like this, and you can see here we have a maximum. If instead your second derivative is positive, well then you have a local minimum at x equals c. After all, a positive second derivative means your function is concave up, and sure enough, there's our local min. Now notice that I said that the second derivative test can often be used to classify our critical points, but not always. Sometimes the second derivative test will fail us. If, for example, the second derivative at c is zero, we can't draw any conclusions. The function could have a local max, a local min, or maybe neither. We could be in this situation where our function has an inflection point. It's also possible that your second derivative just doesn't exist at x equals c, and hence the second derivative test doesn't apply. In this case, or in the situation of number three, we would have to look for a different method for classifying our critical point. All right, that was the second derivative test back in Calc 1. Let's see how we can extend these ideas to get a second derivative test in Calc 3. All right, here it is, folks. One of my favorite results from this part of the course, the multivariable second derivative test. It says the same sort of thing as the test you know from Calc 1. It allows us to classify a critical point as a local max, a local min, or a saddle point, though sometimes it can be unsuccessful. The setup is the same. We begin with a critical point AB of our function f of x, y. Since we want to be able to talk about second derivatives, we'll assume that our function has second derivatives at AB, and we're also going to assume that our function is not too crazy at this point. So we'll assume that fxx, fyy, and fxy exist and are continuous near AB, so our function is reasonably well behaved. Now at this point in the Calc 1 version of this test, you would have looked at the sign of your second derivative at the critical point AB. Well now we don't have just one second derivative, we have several. Turns out though there's a way that you can combine these second derivatives to get a new function D, and the sign of that new function tells you whether you have a local max, min, or saddle point. So we're going to define the function DXY to be this combination of our second derivatives fxx, fyy, minus fxy squared. If you'd like an easy way to remember this function, you can think of it as the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix, fxx, fxy, fyx, fyy. This matrix, by the way, is called the Hessian matrix. Now you might be wondering, Zach, why do we have an fyx term in our matrix, but we don't have an fyx term over here? Well, we sort of do. Remember, since our derivatives exist and are continuous near AB, Clairaut's theorem says that fyx is really the same as fxy. Thanks, Clairaut. All right, what can we say about AB as our critical point based on the sign of this D function? Well, it turns out that if DAB is positive, you're going to have some kind of a local extremum, either a local max or a local min. To figure out which one it is, we look at the sign of our second derivative fxx. Just like in Calc 1, if our second derivative is positive, it means we have a local minimum. If our second derivative is negative, it means we have a local maximum. That's the situation when dab is positive. If instead dab is negative, well then you got yourself a saddle point. If you don't remember this term, check out our last video. Essentially though, it's a critical point of a multivariable function that's neither a maximum nor a minimum. Finally, it could be the case that DAB is zero. Just like in Calc 1, our second derivative test is inconclusive. We'd have to use different methods to decide if our point is a local min, local max, or a saddle point. And that's it, folks. That's the test. 
Before we jump into an example, I'd like to give you a bit of intuition as to why this result is true. Unfortunately, the full proof does require some knowledge of Taylor series, which we won't get to until the second half of our course. But for now, let me give you a bit of justification for this first bullet point. So let's assume for a moment that DAB is positive. That is, FXX, FYY minus FXY squared is greater than zero. Oh, but hold on a second. Minus FXY squared is the negative of something squared. So this is definitely a negative quantity. If this is negative, but the whole expression is positive, it must be the case that FXX, FYY is positive. Well, when is the product of two terms positive? They would either have to be both positive or both negative. So FXX and FYY have the same sign. So it really doesn't matter if we check the sign of FXX in this next step or FYY. They have the same sign. So I've written it with X here, but you could just as easily check Y. Now, if FXX is positive, then FYY is also positive, which means that in the X and Y directions, my function is concave up. It looks sort of like this. You can see we're getting a bowl shape. That gives us a local minimum. If instead fxx was negative, then so too would be fyy. Our function would be concave down in both of these directions, and instead of a bowl, we would have a dome. That dome would have a local maximum. So this isn't a formal proof, but it should give you an idea as to why this result is true. All right, folks, let's try out our new second derivative test with the example from the last video. Here, we're gonna use the second derivative test to classify the critical points of the function shown here. We're gonna classify them as local mins, local maxes, or saddle points. So in our last video, we actually found the critical points, right? We took the partial derivatives with respect to x and y. We noted that these derivatives exist everywhere, so we figured out where they were both equal to zero, and we got two points, 0, 0, and 1, 1. To figure out if these are maxes, mins, or saddle points, we're going to use the second derivative test. To do that, we need to find the second derivatives of fxy. Okay, so let's start with the second partial derivative with respect to x. That's obtained by differentiating this expression one more time with respect to x. I get a value of 6. Next, I'll look for my second partial derivative with respect to y. That's obtained by differentiating this expression with respect to y. I get 12 minus 12y. Finally, I need my cross partial derivative, fxy or alternatively fyx. They're gonna be the same. I can get this derivative by either differentiating this expression with respect to y or this expression with respect to x. In either case, you should get an answer of minus six, another constant function. On the next slide, we'll wrap up this problem by plugging in our critical points and looking for the sign of that d function. Based on what we observe, we should obtain a classification. All right, folks, let's apply that second derivative test. I like to summarize my information in a table like this. If you do this, the TAs are gonna love you. It's very organized. Along the top, we have our critical points, and down the first column, we have the information relating to this d function. So what we're gonna do is plug in our critical point to each of these quantities and see what the sign of this d function is at the end. Starting with zero, zero, when I plug into fxx, well, fxx is a constant, it's six, right? So I get a value of six for fxx. When I plug into fyy, this term goes away and I'm left with 12. And when I plug into fxy, again, I get a constant of minus six. What we're gonna do is compute fxx fyy minus fxy squared. fxx times fyy is six times 12, that's 72, minus minus six squared, so that's 72 minus 36, I get a value of 36. Now this is positive, right? What does our second derivative test say if we get a positive value for d? Well, it says that we have either a local max or a local min. How do we know which one? We have to look at the sign of either fxx or fyy. Doesn't matter which one. In this case, I'm gonna look at fxx. fxx at zero, zero is six. It's positive. If d is positive and fxx is positive, well, it means you have a local min, and that's our classification. We're gonna do the exact same thing with one, one. When we plug into fxx, we get six. 
When we plug into fyy, we're gonna get 12 minus 12, that's zero. When we plug into fxy, we get minus six, and now we have to compute this d function. We take fxx times fyy, that's zero, and then we subtract fxy squared. That gives us minus 36. Ah, so d is negative in this case. What does the second derivative test say when d is negative? Well, if you look back a couple slides, it tells us that we actually have a saddle point, and that's our classification, a saddle point at 1, 1. Let's end this video with a quick look at the graph so you can see that this checks out. Here's the graph of our function fxy viewed from two different angles. Let's start by looking at the point 0, 0. In the first picture, you can see that at 0, 0, we're going to be sitting right at the bottom of this bowl. We have a local minimum. That might be even clearer in the second picture. 0, 0, local minimum. On the other hand, at 1, 1, we would be at this point right here. You can see that in this direction, we have a maximum, right? We're coming up out of the bowl and down the side of the function. But in this direction, we have a minimum. The same can be seen in the second picture. A minimum in this direction, a maximum in this direction. We've got ourselves a saddle point.